Welcome to Retiring Well. We've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to be talking about why are we finding ourselves in this retirement crisis and, and how is that impacting you and your retirement plan? But we're going to be offering different solutions and talking through what it is that you need to retire and what those different areas are that are so important to you, along with the two stages of investing. What, which one of those would you fall under? Along with your real versus average returns. What does that really mean and what impact will that have on your retirement plan? So stay tuned to Retiring Well. Retiring Well. Brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring well, plan to retire well. Listen, in this segment, I just want to talk about a question that gets raised a lot. Why do we have a retirement crisis in this country? You know, according to the Insured Retirement Institute, 45% of boomers have no savings at all. Now, boomers are people born between 46 and 64. Now, of the other 55%, only 28% of those ha have less than 100,000 in savings. So you got you know, better than half the boomers with very little savings relying totally on Social Security. Now, just to, to, to kind of put this in perspective, you know, com there used to be companies that had pensions. Well, in 1974 was the first that, that came and rolled out with the IRAs, okay? And at that time, it was a very low amount that you could put in. To them. In 1978, we get the first of the 401ks. Okay, so what you got happening now is you got companies getting away from pensions, now asking employees to start saving for themselves. Say, sounded like a great concept, right? So in 1978, you got to understand the first of the boomers were turning age 32. So what happened? You know, were they taught to save? If the parents had a pension plan and, and didn't necessarily have to worry about, did they pass that on to the next generation that maybe they have to do some things different? That could be part of it, right? Didn't see the value of saving. Could it have been, you know, loss of purchasing power? You know, you've had inflation, you know, eroding people's purchasing power, maybe wages not keeping up like they should. Maybe with all this quantitative easing we've had, maybe that's kind of devalued our dollar. Maybe what we found is that with, you know, higher cost of living, and wages and things not keeping up and lost purchasing power, they couldn't put any money away. And then add something else to this mix. You know, this boomer generation's had to experience two market losses where the market dropped to half its value. You had the tech bubble of 2000 through 2002, you know, in a two and a half year period, dropped to half its value. And then you had the credit crash of 2008, dropped to half its value again in, a, in a, even a shorter period of time. And that kind of wreaked havoc with people psychologically because they're trying to save, but they're, they're a little reluctant to take on risk because they, they've seen the volatility of the market. You know, Social Security was not meant to be the retirement plan. You know, by definition, it's called SSI, Supplemental Security Income. It was supposed to just come along something else that you had, maybe like a pension. All right. Now, what do you do going forward? Well, one, try to get out of debt. You don't want to be in retirement, you know, with any kind of debt. Can you imagine not having a paycheck and still have a mortgage payment? So work on that. The earlier you start, the better. It's never too late, so always start building that. You know, a lot of you folks have been raising the kids, putting them through college, and now, now's the time. Now's the time to start putting it away. So listen, you know, what you want to do that's even more important is plan to retire well. You know, if you're that person looking towards retirement, you're getting there, you want to, you want to see how all the pieces of the puzzle are going to be put together, then give us a call by all means. I'm really glad Larry shared those important statistics about savings or the lack thereof. I think back to my childhood and it was ingrained in me to, to start saving as early as possible. And so it's one I think back to my first job and tucking that money aside and, and not spending every penny that came through. But it's something that a lot of times people aren't able to necessarily get ahead and start that saving. But it's so important when you look at ultimately our, your overall retirement plan and start Starting early in that power of compounding. Absolutely. You know, John, when you're younger, time is your friend with investing. You have, you know, hopefully many years ahead of you. So getting something small, you know, started early. For those of you that are watching the show that are in your 20s or even 30s or maybe even 40s, you know, even just a little bit at a time tucking it away um, can really pay big dividends to you in retirement. You know, John, of all of our clients, you know, that we have here with, with meeting over the years, 
you know, very seldomly has somebody won the lotto or hit a big home run or something like that. They've just been prudent savers over the years, been diligent with that, and, and just really watched it, not got too over leveraged, not had a bunch of debt, um, you know, and that sort of thing. And I think that's important in today's day and age as well, where it's easier to get debt. Maybe it seems uh, interest rates are low and it makes sense to get that. But fast forward into retirement, you know, having less going out, you know, is, is, is the same as more coming in. So be, be prudent savers. You know, jokingly, we always say is your in-laws or your parents can't be your retirement plan for an inheritance because maybe they're going to spend it all before you get a chance to get to it. Yeah, that's, that seems to be the common conversation we have. Is, is it your goal to spend down every last penny of your savings? And and seems like most of the time that's the case. And so uh, the other area that came to my mind in, in this when talking about this is what type of instrument or tax vehicle are you going to be putting the retirement plan into? To. Is that a traditional sense where you're getting a tax deduction today and paying taxes down the road? Or is it one where you're going to put uh, the money in after tax, for example, into a Roth IRA where it'll be tax free down the road for you? So again, lots of different things to be paying attention to. We'd love the opportunity to sit down and discuss that in more detail with you. Stay tuned as we're going to be diving into uh, what do I need to retire as well as the two stages of investing. Centennial Wealth Advisory is a proud sponsor of the Traverse City St. Francis Gladiators football team. Are you nearing retirement or in retirement? Have you had your portfolio just looked at or have a second opinion on that portfolio recently? Centennial Wealth is a full service advisory firm and we have multiple locations in Northern Michigan. I'm in the Gaylord office primarily, the office is right downtown Gaylord, also up in the Petoskey office as well, that office is right off of 31. Um, I'd love to hear your story, I'd love to sit down and chat and it's a free no obligation consultation so just call the number on the screen. Okay, in this segment, I just want to answer that question. You know, when somebody asks, what do I need to do to retire? Okay, so I'm going to give you a number of things that you're going to want, you're going to, want to pay attention to. First of all, you know, the first thing you need to do is envision yourself in retirement. All right, you no longer have a paycheck. What does that look like? All right, you got to put yourself in, the, in that situation and start thinking about a lot of different things. Um, healthcare, you know, if I had a company paying for my healthcare and now I'm no longer working for that company, where am I going to bridge the gap? You know, am I up to the age of 65 where I can get Medicare yet? If not, where is that? Where are we going to solve for that? Um, debt. You know, where am I at with debt? I mean, ideally, don't you want to get to retirement with no debt? <laughs> Right, so you know, where am I at with that? If I'm 15 years away from retirement and I've got 20 years left on the amortization for my mortgage, maybe I'm gonna to want to do something about that. Social Security, when am I gonna take it? We've talked about this in other segments. You know, I can take it at age 62, but it's almost double if I can wait to age 70. Can I do that? Is it desirable to work a little longer to, to maybe build that up? Inflation, you know, uh, folks, you gotta pay attention to this because, you know, I can be sitting there looking soon to be retired and I can say, I think between all these sources of income, I, you know, we can meet our needs. But then, you know, those needs are gonna rise, right? Over time, the cost of living is going to increase. What mechanism or plan do I have in place to account for that accordingly? Taxes, okay? If I'm somebody that's been putting into a lot of these qualified plans or retirement plans, and it's money that's never been taxed, and now I'm gonna be in retirement and, and that money is gonna be taxed, what have I done to account for that? What about the taxation on Social Security? You know, what does that look like? How much of that is going to be eroding, you know, my income that, that's going to need to be there to meet my needs? And then, you know, getting back to that envisioning what, you know, um, retirement looks like. 
what's the lifestyle you want to live? <laughs> you know, are you looking to do a lot of traveling? Um, are you looking to leave a, you know, a, a large part of your assets to the kids? Maybe a legacy, maybe you're legacy minded, but what does your lifestyle look like? What is your needs? How much income do you really need? We may want to sit down there and, and figure what that's going to be. Sometimes it's putting the paper, to, you know, pencil to the paper to figure what that needs to be. If you're going to plan for income, you need to know what, how much income you're planning for, right? You know, Zig Ziglar had a famous quote, you know, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. You have to plan. You have to, you know, take all these different considerations and you have to put them together to make it work for you in retirement. Now, if you're somebody that's already retired, then maybe this is the time to get a retirement checkup to make sure that all those facets of your retirement plan are playing well for you. If you're not somebody yet retired and you just want to plan, then absolutely give us a call. You want to plan to retire well, folks, so you, you want to have somebody help you with that. During a market downturn, people tend to panic. That's a natural reaction to seeing your retirement savings decline right in front of your eyes. Take a deep breath. We can help. We recommend the following three steps. Number one, schedule risk exposure review and make adjustments if necessary. Number two, request a retirement income analysis to serve as the starting point for your retirement strategy, making sure your money lasts as long as you do. And number three, develop a holistic financial plan. Call or click to request a free, no obligation meeting, either in person or over the phone or video chat. We look forward to meeting you. Plan to retire well. Hi, my name is Jack Klunder and I am a financial advisor with Centennial Wealth Advisory. I work out of our Cadillac office and we specialize in retirement planning. We take a very holistic approach. We start with investments and see how you're situated there. We do wealth management. We do uh, income planning. Uh, we do tax planning. Any kind of health care issues or needs that you might have for insurance. And then we talk about what your legacy plan might be. So if you are nearing or in retirement and you have questions that you want to go over, please give the number on the screen a call and we can have and set up a free no obligation consultation. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about the two stages of investing. When you're in your working years, you're getting a paycheck, uh, hopefully you're meeting your income needs. What you want to start doing is setting some monies aside for retirement, okay? We call this the growth and accumulation phase of our lives or the stage of our lives because we're, we're trying to save. We're trying to save for that great day when we can finally not have to work any longer, okay? But when we get near retirement or we soon to be retired, you know, we're entering a different stage and it's very important to understand this because we're now entering what's called a preservation of wealth and income phase of our life. It's a whole different stage because we're, we're rapidly getting to that place where we're not working any longer or not going to be working. We can't grow and accumulate assets anymore. We're going to have to rely on that nest egg for an income. So what's my, what's my attitude or risk tolerance now at this time? When I was in the growth and accumulation phase of my life, if my account dropped quite considerably in any one year, doesn't really have too much of an effect on my life because I have that paycheck, I have that income coming in, my needs are being met, and I have time for that asset to come back uh, to where it was and possibly again grow. But if I'm getting close to retirement, I'm soon, soon gonna get there and I have to rely on that savings to now be income for me, can I afford to have that account drop significantly? Do I have the time um, to be able to wait and have that come back. I might not. And folks, if I'm actually in retirement and I no longer have any other income but that portfolio, maybe Social Security, then it's going to have a drastic effect on my lifestyle. 
So understanding this stage and what stage I'm in is going to be very important because how, my, how I invest appropriately is going to be different in, under both those scenarios. So why are we having this conversation? We see too many times where people are coming in, they're getting near retirement or they're in retirement and they're invested exactly like they were maybe in the growth and accumulation phase of their life. Very, very dangerous because if, if, if in that previous stage that they were in, they were taking a lot of risk and now they're bringing that into this next stage, again, what are they going to do if the market drops dramatically and that income plan it gets blown apart? So very, very important to speak to an advisor. We encourage you, give us a call to make sure that whatever stage you're in, you're invested appropriately. So give us a call. I'm so happy Larry brought up these couple of topics here. You know, obviously when we have a, a television show, Retiring Well and, and our you know, Centennial Wealth Advisory Plan to Retire Well is what we do every day, you know, but to think about what do I need to retire? What are those things out there? And for it seems like such a simple question, but there's a lot of pieces that are involved in that. You know, that's why here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we focus solely on retirement planning, helping people plan to retire, and then in retirement, you know, helping map all of those areas out, John. I know that you've met lots of different folks and many different stories over the years and, and about getting to this point. Yeah, so I was just meeting with a couple. They're in the Glen Arbor area and everything, and, and they've been working their whole lives, saving for this opportunity to retire, And but they had been in different positions at work where they'd been there 25, 30 years now and had a nice income stream, but the, they never really looked at the B word, our budget. And that was something that, that sort of caught them by surprise when I said, okay, part of your retirement planning, I need you to work on mapping out a budget for yourself. And, and they hadn't really ever done that. They were used to just, okay, we've got the cash flow coming in, let's go ahead and get that new patio set or whatever it might be that they wanted. And so we worked together and sort of mapped out what those expenses look like. And then we have a program that we like to walk through where it maps out, okay, upon retirement, what does the next 20, 30 years look like for you while factoring in inflation and taxes and, and ultimately those investments and what income you're gonna draw from that portfolio. And so it's really valuable to be looking at not just maybe what, what everything looks like today, but mapping it out long term so that you get a good visual of what your retirement plan could look like. And ultimately our job to, of course, help you plan to retire well. And it's absolutely right, John. You know, just like Larry talked about kind of that two phases, you know, much of this is taking place in that preservation of wealth and income phase. You know, we want to map out what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish in retirement? Everybody's retirement is going to be different. Some people want to spend time with grandkids. Other people want to travel. Some people want to just relax because they've been working their whole life. You know, but for you, you have to ask yourself, what are my goals in retirement? And then like John said, you know, what is that budget? What money am I going to need in that? So if you're out there and that sounds like you, you're maybe a pro approaching retirement or just in retirement and you don't have a formal plan for this and you don't know where your income is going to be, give us a call at the number on the screen. We'd love to sit down with you at a free no obligations visit and walk through that with you and see what that looks like. Stay tuned because coming up next, we're going to talk about the difference between real return and average returns. My name is David Mikowski, I'm Chairman of Veterans in Crisis. This is our tournament, this is our third annual tournament. I'm a former combat Marine uh, and I wanted to pay it forward. It's Colonel Art Forster, U.S. Air Force, retired. What a pleasure it is to be out here like in Heath today to play for such a worthy cause, Veterans in Crisis. It's an honor to be here as a Marine Corps veteran. I served from 1996 to 2001 as a, a Marine Embassy Guard. Um, Veterans in Crisis has done so much for the, the local community here and um, we're, we're proud to be a part of it. I'm here with my Honor Bank team, um, Golfing for Veterans for Crisis organization. I'm a fellow veteran myself, uh, six years Army, five years Navy, so anything we can do to help out the veterans, we know they're in need and they did a great service for this country. I'm honored to be one of the founding board members of Veterans in Crisis that is you know, putting on this event. Veterans in Crisis, we are literally impacting vets 
on the, at the grassroots, one by one, right here in Northern Michigan. Thank you to Centennial for sponsoring this whole and being a proud sponsor of Veterans of Christ. We appreciate your commitment to helping veterans here in Northern Michigan. My dad was uh, in the Army, uh, injured on Normandy Beach, and uh, he went through five campaigns. I made it back home. Uh, my brother went to Nam. It goes without saying to me that without these guys, we wouldn't be here playing golf, okay? Uh, wouldn't be living the life we live. I'm one of the founding members of Veterans in Crisis. It is an entirely volunteer organization, but I wanted to get involved in something worthwhile, and I can't think of anything more worthwhile than serving our veterans. I'm Bob Baldwin. I'm from Lake Leland, Michigan. I served in the U.S. Army from 67 to 69, did a tour of duty in Vietnam. 1968-1969 with the 9th Infantry Division. Uh, I want to thank the, the organization that put this outing together. I know it's the third year and uh, congratulations to a uh, well-deserved uh, turnout and hope all the proceeds will help some of our fellow veterans. You know, I myself am a veteran. Um, I served in the Army National Guard in the early 80s, uh, but I have a, a great deal of respect for those that were in the service and actually had to fight. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough that I didn't have to, um, you know, get sent off. Um, I put my time in, but a huge amount of respect for those that, that have, and, uh, and a huge amount of respect for those that didn't come home. There's a tsunami on the horizon with veterans and veteran crisis and it starts with veterans who have been now involved in uh, a 20 year war and preceding that we had a 17 year war with Vietnam so now we're up on the precipice of a lot of those veterans uh, that are retired coming home wanting to settle in and they have issues. They have either PTSD or their Agent Orange or some other kind of malady. I heard a statistic not long ago that said that there was more uh, veterans committing suicide from coming from Afghanistan than those that actually fought and died in Afghanistan. That's sad. Um, to me, that just breaks my heart. You know, we need to be taking care of our veterans. You know, um, they're, they're, we love our country. These are men that are putting their lives on the line for our country. Uh, when they come home, they, sh they deserve our support. 98% of the proceeds that'll go directly to a veteran. A lot of the veterans have issues getting uh, quick service from a wonderful organization of VA, but they're not the fastest response team. We have responded as quickly as 24 hours to help a veteran with a hot water heater or uh, dental work or legal work even. We heard about veterans in crisis that was uh, serving local veterans and we said, you know what, this is right in our own backyard. Let's, let's, uh, let's sponsor them this year. So we're very proud to do that. Today, this is a, a golf event. It's a, called a scramble. So, you know, everybody's out, you know, playing golf and um, hopefully enjoying themselves. And the beauty here is just uh, uh, amazing. And, and, they got, and they got a great day to boot. I want to say thank you to everybody that's played in this tournament today, the giving of their time, uh, our sponsors, uh, Locke and Heath, who we are going to have a long-term contract with, and certainly it would be, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Centennial Wealth. Uh, they're our title sponsor, and uh, we've got a multi-year agreement with them, and, uh, and I'm just so blessed to have the opportunity to live in such a community like this with so many giving individuals and people who want to give back. It's just, it's a very humbling thing. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about real return versus average rate of return. Two different things. So let me illustrate. Let's say you had an investment or portfolio that made or lost 50% the first year. Okay, it made 50% the second year, it lost again 50% the third year, and then again made 50% in the fourth year. Wouldn't you say that's a pretty volatile investment? Funny thing though, if you do the math on that investment, they would tell you that that portfolio or that investment averaged 0%. <laughs> All right, but what if I had $100,000, okay, in the first year it lost 50%, that means now my investment is down to $50,000, okay? Then in the second year it made 50%, now I'm back up to 75,000, all right? Then it loses 50%, now it's down to 37,500. 
And then lo and behold, the fourth year, it's back up 50%. Now I'm at $56,250. Now, for, a, for, an, for a, an account that averaged 0%, this, this portfolio really lost 43.75%. Now, that's a big difference. And if you look at there, out there, most, uh, most por portfolios or investments, what is the return they're always trying to give you? Most generally, they're going to give you the average return. But the real return is much, much different. Now, I recognize that this is a, an example that's grossly exaggerated because how many investments do you see losing 50% and gaining 50% year after year is? But very vitally important to understand the difference between the two different numbers between real and average because if I'm looking at my investments and I'm just looking at the average and it has a high degree of volatility to it, then what is really my real rate of return? Very, very important to understand, very important to know. If you're somebody that wants to know the volatility of your portfolio, most importantly, how it operated in 2008 in the last recession, so you can see what kind of volatility it could possibly have, then you're going to want to give us a call. That was a really helpful visual that Larry put together there where he's talking about real returns versus average returns. And one of the things that stands out to me most actually was from earlier in the show where Larry was talking about the, the growth and accumulation phase versus the preservation of wealth and income phase and how important that is to recognize when you're at um, those different stages and what that transition looks like for you. Because if you're in a position where you're saying, okay, I'm either close to retirement or in in retirement and now all of this money that you've saved your entire life you want to protect it as best as possible and maybe generate income it's it's that real return of seeing a negative 50 percent could drastically impact your plan even though again the average return might be um, might look pretty good to you but again it's it's factoring in what a say a 2008 or another major market drop could do to you absolutely John you know it, it's it's kind of scary in the times we live in right now. We've been really fortunate with great market performance as of late, averaging over time doing well. But put yourself in the person's shoes that's just about to retire or retiring, and all of a sudden you get a big market pullback or a drawdown. This happened to some folks before they become clients of ours. Uh, quite a while ago, they had come to us, they were from the Cadillac area, and that's what happened to them. They were planning a retirement for a specific time and getting ready to pull that trigger, and all of a sudden the market dropped significantly. And they've had good average returns over time, but that real return all of a sudden dramatically changed their investments and dramatically changed their plans. All of a sudden, they had a million plus to now just over half a million, and wow, what a difference. You know, put yourself in those shoes. If that's you, whatever dollar amount you have today in your 401k IRAs, imagine a certain percentage of that just being gone and then having to retire. Wouldn't that be a real gut check to you to have to do that? So consider, like John says, that preservation of wealth phase and how important that is. Yeah, so true. And that's something we always encourage, a, a no cost, no obligation visit. We'd love the opportunity to sit down with you, better understand your story and what your goals are, and see if we can help you plan to retire well. Thanks again for tuning in to Retiring Well.